can't believe my ears. I can't believe my eyes. Dear Jane, I don't know how to begin. My name is James and I play guitar. Neil, I play drums. Jer, I'm the front man. Heather DeYoung and perhaps, just maybe, uh, a little bit, I might play the bass. Tim LeClaire and I play guitar for Dear Jane. <laughs> Jeremy and Heather, our bass player, put out an ad on Ontario Music, this website message board thing, looking for musicians. And then we ran into James on there. So I replied, and another person named Kevin, who was our original guitar player, replied. We, we jammed once on New Year's Day on 2002. Was that the first day? It was the first day. We actually have photographs from that with you. Let me say, you guys are losers for having a band practice on New Year's Day. Like, <laughs> do you not have any lives? No, no we, we don't. don't. This we is why I joined much later. They got cooler later. Yeah. Were there any struggles you guys faced as you started oh, yeah. the young band? What do you mean, were there? Kevin and James oh, used to fist fight. In the very beginning, there were a lot of, um... I hated Heather. Yeah, me and James just really didn't get along, ever. <laughs> That's a lie. Me and James hit it off right away. Yeah. Me and so James have, have always had this writing chemistry that's it's kind of unparalleled. I don't know, I've never worked with someone else that I could completely understand musically in, in such a sm short period of time. And Neil too, I mean, Neil, me and Neil, I've always really associated close with bass players and drummers. And like me and Neil, again, we clicked really quick. So we had a good like two and a half year run at the beginning of the band where we had no lineup switches at all and it was, was sad it was a big one when Kevin left yeah basically uh, Kevin decided that uh, band things weren't his thing anymore he wanted to work and he wanted to make a life for himself it really felt like a family and then Kevin had to leave two and a half years in and that was like a real big shakeup for us we went through a series of guitar players in that year after Kevin left it was kind of tough Tim basically was like, you know what, I, I'm down in London right now, I can come down to Toronto, no problem, let's just do this thing. So we had him out and uh, it was magic. It so worked. It was good. It was like sex. It was tough getting that momentum back. So many guitar players leaving and being replaced. And it was tough. But... I mean, struggle-wise, the biggest struggle was money struggles and trying to get our van. Basically with every band, you know. Yeah, I mean, it's all the same shit that every band goes through, you know. Um, the trials and tribulations of trying to start out. It's mm. called paying your dues and you fucking pay. For an indie band, the position that we are in, we get a lot of opportunities and chances at. 90% of bands that are even way bigger than us don't even get to do. So Absolutely. we are very thankful in that and thankful to our friends and fans that help us out as much as they do. You know, we love them to death Absolutely. for it. How many bands who are in our position can that, honestly, that, say, that, can that, honestly yeah. say that they've made three music videos? I, I can't think of one. Uh, the first video that we shot, the one that, that got played on Much Loud, uh, we had no crew. It was, just, it was just us and the director. Wow. So we were all acting as camera operators and lighting technicians. Yeah. We were doing all of the, the physical labor for the video shoot. And uh, we spent probably about 18 hours. Oh god. We, we Heather operated the fog machine. Tim's girlfriend did the little slate thing. We started at noon and we ended at like 5 a.m. And uh, that was pretty brutal, but uh, it turned out to be a worthwhile experience. The video got a lot of play on Wish Loud and got our name out across Canada. So. We had quoted before as like a, one of the hardest working indie bands in Canada and I think, I think we are. We, we tour non-stop and we're not going to stop. We hope we can ride this train as far as we can. All we're doing is going one day at a time and we're going to do the best that we can and we're going to work as hard as we can and that's all we can ask. Some of the memorable moments I would definitely have to say, um, for me anyways, opening up for Silverstein was absolutely amazing. Playing that, you know, sold out capacity crowd at the Mod Club, absolutely amazing time. I mean, uh, we played on the acoustic MySpace stage at Taste of Chaos last year. Hanging out with Static Lullaby and Under Oath. The used in My Chemical Romance. And them telling us how good we were and them, well, quite frankly, they were hitting on me, but... 
we have some times where we don't necessarily really like each other at the time, you know, but I think that kind of goes with every band, you know, you're, you're in a position where you're stuck in a van with somebody for, you know, 10 hours a day, six days a week, and, you know, every free minute, you know, after a while, you, you want to reach over and strangle the motherfucker that, next to you. When we get on stage, and it's different, right? It and is. We, we just totally, like, all that shit just melts away, and all you see is your, these people who have paid money to come see you, and, you know, you're just, you get up there, and all, it's like, I can't imagine a single drug that would be better than that. I have a perfect story for this, dude. You know, uh, we went to a place in Trois Rivières called the Manchester, and all the way up there, we were fighting. Wanted to literally kill each other, saying this show is gonna fucking suck. Fuck and you! It was a tiny you're a fucking that asshole. That we long. got there, and there were so many kids there to see us. And it seems like as soon as we got there and we got on stage, all that shit just didn't matter anymore. We, this is the reason we were here. And we've never played Trois Rivières. I don't think we'd ever played Quebec before then. We played a show in Montreal before that, and there was like five kids there. Do you know what it's like to play for a bunch of kids that can't even speak English, English. but will sing? Every lyric to a song that you haven't even and put out yet? Yeah, and they don't know the lyrics. Is, <laughs> that's that's part the best that, part. That whole best part of that situation was, not only did they know all the lyrics, not only did they sing with all the songs, we did an encore. Yeah, and yeah. we didn't have any other songs, so we just played the same songs over again. <laughs> and they went nuts. Yeah, was it good. was phenomenal. It was one of the best experiences. I mean, to sum it up, I guess you basically say, all the, the good outweighs the bad. So no matter what bad shit happens that week, or that show, or whatever, it always just kind of washes away like it never even happened. Okay. We're just going to play as much as possible, get to as many different places as possible, and uh, you know, see what goes. We want to be a rock band that you know that puts in their time and you know hopefully one day everybody will remember Dear Dan and I. You know we we can't ask for anything more. We really can't. Rock stardom, owning the world, and having lots and lots of babies that you don't know about. Look up for Juju and I coming to your town. <laughs> <laughs>